to. Uh, let's bring in the CEO of Canadian Tire. Uh, Greg Hicks is joining us. Greg, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, let's just talk about the year that was because um, it, it was kind of bipolar, wasn't it? In the beginning, extreme um, stress on the operations. In the second half, kind of getting into this new groove and new, and new reality of increased demand. Yeah, good morning. You're absolutely right. Um, you know, I think when the team, when the team looks back uh, on uh, on 2020, there's all sorts of highs, uh, highs and lows. I think, you know, from a business results standpoint, we we couldn't be happier. I think if you take a a traditional uh, lens and look at our our business results, I think you'd probably say we 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 punched every key on the keyboard. I mean, we had. Very strong uh, top line uh, growth. We had healthy margins. I think the team did a fantastic job, uh, and a disciplined job around expense management. And then we saw the power of operating leverage really drive down uh, to our bottom line. But I think I, I, I really think the story goes beyond um, business results. I think when I reflect back, um, I really think I really think about our purpose uh, and that purpose of, of being there for life in Canada. In this case. Uh, being there for life in Canada, no matter what life looks like, and you know, I really believe um, it kind of galvanized our whole team and our brand uh, around uh, being much more uh, than just um, a, a brand that sells products and services. Albeit those products and services were pretty critical uh, to enable Canadians to uh, to get through the crisis, but. Our team, they, they, they work and they live uh, in the communities in which we operate. Um, and so um, they know where the needs uh, are and they genuinely care. Uh, and I'm, I'm just really, really proud of the actions that uh, our team took uh, across hundreds of communities across Canada um, and, uh, and really think about our purpose uh, in addition to our results when I look back on 2020. I thought your Christmas sales were actually a pretty good example of that kind of humanity, right? In a time where people feel like they've lost so much, Christmas became so much more important. You saw what, like a 41% surge in, in decorations um, for Christmas. So it kind of speaks to that. And a lot of those purchases increasingly done online. I, you disclosed the sales. It's $1.6 billion. That's for the year. So that's just about 10% of the overall sales picture. How much more meaningfully do you think that can grow and that can contribute to to the overall story of, of Canadian Tire going forward? Yeah, I think it's it's tough to know um, how it's going to settle in. I mean, it's it it really uh, ebbed and flowed, um, you know, by store by region depending on the restrictions. Um, you know, e-commerce was already on a, a, a pretty good uh, clip of growth before. Uh, the crisis uh, stepped in, but but we learned, you know, we learned a lot uh, about our our business, inclusive of e-commerce. I think, I think one thing that is abundantly clear is the best version of ourselves in terms of maximizing rev revenue travels through all channels being open, um, inclusive of of, uh, of physical stores and having all those channels um, work together. I mean, for illustration, you know, the regions uh, here in Ontario that, that just reopened this week, I mean, those stores have been absolutely off their feet, uh, busy. Um, and um, when, they settle, uh, when they settle back after this instant uh, surge here, they're going to settle back at a waterline that is much higher from a sales standpoint than, than just, just curbside. And so, you know, I think that is a is a powerful you know learning for us i mean on your show uh, uh over the over the years you know you you've the, the bricks and mortar retailers there's been a there's been a cloud uh over our heads with you know respect to the retail apocalypse or or um you know physical retail being being dead and and all of that was was it was a you know subjective point of view uh, and here you know during the crisis and COVID, we have real empirical evidence that um, by having physical and digital come together, um, you you know you really can uh, maximize sales and, and have a strategy that stands up well in front of the customer. Greg, it's John Ehrlichman. At the same time, you know we we will remind our audience that Canadian Tire has so many brands under the hood, and uh, you know one of the things that was announced was the closure of the national sports stores. So, how are you thinking about the kind of brands that are 
designed for success in this new future where maybe the store footprint still matters at the same time that the online footprint matters? I mean, what are you thinking about the, the brands that really are set to thrive in the future? Yeah, well, uh, first, I'll, I guess I'll start with National Sports. We we did make the decision to close National Sports, small banner for us, 18 stores uh, exclusively uh, in Ontario with a high degree of overlap, John, um, in, in terms of the product categories that, that the, the brand carries uh, with a few of our banners. You know, to your point, we have quite a few in our portfolio, so lots of overlap with Sport Check, lots of over, overlap with, with Canadian Tower Retail, but also Pro Hockey Life and Atmosphere, uh, et cetera. So we, we have category overlap, then we have kind of density in the trade area in terms of physical retail. And then over the course of the last couple of years, as we just talked about, building strong e-commerce uh, capabilities. And we just thought, you know, we were kind of over clubbing uh, in the categories and, and it was a matter of focus uh, for us. So we stand up, um, you know, our, our bigger brands uh, and our core assets. And, and we really believe um, that that's, you know, that's the way to go to market. I mean, we're, John, really thinking about relevance uh, in retail uh, much more than, than we ever, you know, we ever have. Um, and so that applies to, you know, how we understand and engage with customers on a one-on-one -on -one basis and the products and services that we, that we sell. I think, I think relevance is just absolutely critical uh, these days in retailer. <laughs> I don't, you're relevant or you're not. Yeah. I, I just don't think there's much uh, middle ground. So we're, we're trying to be relevant one customer at a time um, with the categories um, that, we, that we operate with. And, and it's all about kind of engagement and spend uh, per customer, uh, more share a wallet, uh, et cetera. And so uh, relevance is just so uh, critical uh, for us. And that's why Triangle Rewards in terms of building capability to understand customers. So you drive relevance yeah. in the right channel with the right message at the right time um, is, uh, is where we're going to be focused. So you use that word engagement, Greg, and um, we, we know the prime minister is going to be talking to some different CEOs today about the road ahead. We, we spoke to the head of Dream Office, who um, his message to Ottawa was he, he thinks that we really have to start having a, a deeper conversation around whether the, the kind of money the federal government has spent should continue if we want to all get back to some kind of normal. What's top of mind for you when you think as a CEO in this country of the message that you want to get to Ottawa? Yeah, I think, I mean, we're, um, right now, we're, we're fairly impacted by, by restrictions. You know, we, we started the year with 60% of our network closed. And, you know, we, we've been very focused uh, on safety for customers and safety for our employees as, as you know, most, uh, if not all, you know, retail businesses have uh, from an industry pr perspective in 2020. We, we strongly believe um, that the right, um, the right choice is, is kind of more diffuse retail and manage uh, capacity. And we and, and all of us in the industry, I think, you know, can, can operate with the right um, right degree of safety. It's tough to know. I mean, as John, as you know, we, we have a financial services business. Um, all of the all of the, the metrics with respect to the health um, of the consumer, they they look quite positive. You know, right now when you when you look at customer payments, when you look at uh, delinquency rates in terms of uh, months past due, they're all you know record lows for us. So there certainly is a fair amount of uh, stimulus. Um, impact, but there's still so much uh, uncertainty. So I don't envy the job uh, the government um, has. We're planning our business in more, you know, 90 day chunks uh, because of just an inability to look forward. Um, but I, overall, I think we we tilt more to to optimism than risk when we think about the financial health of the average Canadian uh, household. And we, we believe that that will, you know, drive spending in the, in the businesses in which we 